again. We pray you through the names of our mothers and the children once again. In the middle, we have our mommy from the Lord's ministry, Sister Umilayo Ali. She is the chairperson of the Lord's ministry.
scholars who committed. We beseech thee, O Lord and Father, that in this seminar, may it please thee, to send us thy Holy Spirit, in order to direct all that we shall say and do, all to the honor, glory, fear, and praise of our holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hail Jehovah and Jesus Christ. Hail Jehovah and Jesus Christ. Please take your seats. Gary, beloved sisters, firstly, we give thanks to Jehovah the Covenant today through our Lord Jesus Christ. For the rest of life and the future of our Lord several years this afternoon. I thank God Almighty for the success. I crown the time to be served with my surrounding sisters. For the others are waiting for for your contributions towards the work of God. In that amongst other things, we will be giving the name and the name of the name of the sum of 100,000 men to support them. For God. Pray God of them to bless you for and replenish your persons. When the group Sarah group, the Lord reminds us of our mother Sarah in the Holy Bible. She was the wife of Abraham, and Sarah actually played motherly role in those days, which we, especially the sisters, have a lot to learn from. Thus the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 51, verse 2, that we should look unto Abraham and unto Sarah that bent him. Read me Isaiah chapter 51, read verse 2. Please. Let us take note of this. The only Bible tells us. To so look unto Abraham, our father. Abraham, he was the husband of Sarah. And because of his love for the work of God, he found friends in the work of God, the Bible tells us, to so look unto him. Continue to read. And unto Sarah that begged him. This is the point why I caused this text to be read. Because I'm addressing Sarah group sisters. With some other sisters who are here to this day, to work and edify them by the grace of God. And unto Sarah that bear thee. Sarah, she was the wife of Abraham. Because of our obedience to the work of God and our husband, the Bible tells us we need to do that. So the need for us, especially our sisters, to follow the example. Thank you. 
to and his beloved son Jesus Christ for keeping us alive from last year that we had our several week annual times in till today that we are gathered here for the same purpose and his grace and comfort. The need for us as God's children to be thankful at all times, not minding the challenges we are going through, cannot be that. Let's hear what the psalmist advised us in terms of thanking God. Psalm 92 verse 1. It is good to say thank you to the Lord. From the King James Version. Read this from the King James Version. Give thanks to the Lord. Exactly. The psalmist advised us that it is a good thing to give thanks unto God. And to sing praise unto the name of God.
have a talk to talk to ourselves. And the topic is coping with current life challenges. So please put your hands together. Jam it. 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 Okay, so most times, most of us, even with the speaker, I'm talking 
talking to everyone about it, including myself. I'm actually leaving myself um, at the point uh, of discussion with contact to explain this part. We must be humble um, when um, doing the work of God and facing challenges and trying, and this will help us to overcome it. In the book of Proverbs 22, verse 4, it is written that by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Remember the subject that has been talked about, hoping for the challenges, um, the challenges of life. And the third point I will talk about, we should have patience. And the Bible it is instructed that in your patience, possess in your soul. There are many challenges that we face, such as, sorry, I'm going to read from my daughter. It will be the loss of a dear one. This is what we face every day. Take note that challenge is continuous. It is what we will face. And that as children of God, we should see it as a training of uh, empowerment as we grow in our life. Personally, I see challenges as a stepping stone for my next phase of life. Because in convenient places, in quiet places, nothing grows. If you are in this life and you, can, you know exactly what is going to happen throughout the day and in the next five years of your life, then it's so boring and it's so blah. We must face challenges. It is written, we have seen it in, in, in people of old and even in this world, people who have come before us, we have read history. So having that mindset that there will always be challenges, so you must always be prepared. Going back to the types of challenges that we have as human beings, I've mentioned one loss. It could be the one of the one. We experience this every, every, every now and then. It could be the loss of a job. This is very common. Looking at the post-pandemic situation, how the, how the world has changed after the pandemic. It could be the loss of a relationship and even our health. So the mindset behind the challenge is very important. That you are able to support when these things come to us. Um, so that after that, after you have surrounded whatever challenge you are going to, some other person around you are able to learn from you and you are able to tell your story so that the next person will learn from you. Most of our times of failure, we fail our exams, but uh, the drive to keep trying to move when you fail is very important. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. For example, the one who invented electricity failed many times. I'm not sure of the case that he was going to fail. Even when he failed the first time, he didn't try again. I'm sure we won't have electricity. Somebody else could have been living in the book of history and been the one who invented electricity. The third challenge that we think about is setback. As individuals, we have plans of what we want to do. Sometimes we don't go as planned. Even I would say 80% of the time, from my own experience and people around me and even friends and God, even in organizations where we work, we have aspirations, we have um, many uh, targets to, to surround, and along the line, there are setbacks. In law, I've forgotten that that work is for circumstances beyond your control. Even when you have put in all the work and prepared yourself, you find out there are setbacks. When things like this happen, we should remember that we should put our trust in God and always refer to Him and put Him before whatever we do so that at the end of the day, we surmount that setback and move on to the next. Establishing our moral compass. Let me explain this. Before now, for example, I used to be very an angry person. Very angry. I'm not angry in particular. I was angry at the world. I was angry at everything around me. Where you where actually you already done. 
in that point you can um that are coming our stories. Some people have um backgrounds coming who have have some kind of sickness from generation to generation. You, 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 you are born into something, you don't know what where it's coming from. Those are challenges that we face. We should remember always to put our faith and trust in God and be patient and uh, keep learning, interacting. So I was talking um, about three points patience, humility, and faith, and how those qualities can help us to face challenges. Going now to the conventional um, life. Is our day to day life, how do we face challenges? Emphasis on post pandemic challenges. The world has changed, and there are some things that follow pandemics. If you go into history, there are infections, people not understanding what is going on around them, and so coming up with different um, crafts and sometimes ill ways to survive. Coming home, bringing it to the level in Nigeria, we have seen the rate of ritual killings have gone so much. This is not, of course, it is against the will of the Almighty and those who don't repent from it and will punish at the end of this time. But when you look deep, when people try to find out why this increase, it's because people are trying to find solutions to the challenges that they face. And because they are not equipped with the word of God or family morals. So they fall into diverse vices and crimes. So, in the conventional term, the way that we can face challenges will be one. To put out the noise. It doesn't happen in one day. There are a lot of noises around us. So many things are happening. You must train yourself to be able to focus on what's important. And, and the, the, the statement that rings in my head every time is move fast. Don't know. What do I mean by move fast? Don't know. People don't make us angry. Things we see around us and on social media will make our heart be perfect. Make sure that you take the ones that are important, putting the word of God behind it, and making sure it is in the world, and move on to the next. Secondly, I will talk about social media. Although it comes to the Lord of uh, advantages. Uh, if it's not well managed as individual, it can lead us to a lot of stress. And stress is one of the factors causing 40%, according to um, some quarters, about the, um, um, let me say, the, the taking some food and freezes and they put the food together. Stress is one of the major um, factors causing challenges during the post pandemic war. Make sure that you are guided on social media. Uh, people have lost their jobs because of social media. They spend so much time, they don't know when to draw the line, and they go against their employer's principles, and they find themselves losing their job. This also can um, aggravate challenges that we face. Another point of mine will be forming small group. For example, in the House of God, Sarah Group System, and all other groups are ways where we can come together as children of God, as family, as the people of God, to share um, our ideas, our problems, um, with people that we trust, and those who are above us in terms of knowledge, we guide us to overcome the challenges. Doing a little bit of kindness has gone a long way. For example, during the pandemic where we couldn't go out, everyone was not in. People receiving gifts got a lot of relief. Just a simple gift. It could be just a bottle of milk or a, a, a bag of groceries for someone who was not expecting it. You might, you might think it's so little. You can call also somebody and just send a thousand error recharge card. Maybe at that point, person was looking for something like that to make calls to other people who can eventually make them like, laugh or teach them new things. And uh, on that occasion, it actually help someone else to relieve a little stress from them or challenge, no matter how small. Giving a tight hug, a genuine tight hug to somebody, oh sister, give me the long term and say, how are you? It goes a long way. It, it looks small, but I have practiced it and I know that it helps. And also, 
traveling. Traveling does not really mean getting on a flight, going to the next village or city or town to see other people and learning their ways of life also help you to understand life better from a different perspective. And you can learn a new skill like a language and how to knit and how to draw. Anything to preoccupy the mind and you can understand life from an artist's point of view or, or from a new point of view. Um, so really, all what I have said, looking at time, I'll mention three points in the show of God that will help us to face and talk the challenges. Emphasis on post pandemic challenges. Faith, humility, and friction. And all the points in our everyday to day life to also help us to uh, face challenges. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that all my people help us to live a real life in our best Thank you.